able to go live, please. Oh, there we go. I think we're live. Welcome, everyone, to our webinar, um, Evolving Love, How to Handle Insecure Attachment. Hi. So it's so great to, to have you here. And uh, first, I wanted to answer the question, like, what are you going to learn today on this call? Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about secure and insecure attachment patterns. What are they? Give you a little definition uh, so you can recognize them. And then we're going to unveil pattern interrupts that you can do yourself to interrupt your insecure patterning when you see it, when you see it happening, and start to give yourself a chance to uh, reapply those secure patterns. Uh, we're gonna tell you about an extraordinary event coming up in San Francisco a little bit later in the call. And at the very end, we're gonna give you a set of free videos and audios. And this is a really extraordinary resource because you can use these to literally retrain your nervous system to have more secure attachment patterns and relationships. It's kind of like taking everything we're gonna learn in the call and, and encapsulating it into a video and an audio so that you can bring it in with you and, and make it part of your practice. Yeah, and I guess I just wanna say one thing about the inspiration for doing this webinar today with all of you on this topic. And Brian and I, you know, over the last year have been getting countless Facebook messages, having conversations and working with couples and singles. And this has been the buzzword, the topic that's come up almost more than any other major relationship topic, which is this idea about attachment theory, these ancient and avoid and avoidant patterns. And so given how how much of a buzzword it's been, we thought, well, let's take this head on because neither Brian and I were all of that happy with what we were reading about it and what we were learning about it. And we wanted to bring to you some of the really powerful work that we've been doing with uh, people in relationships and people that are single in order to repattern or rewrite this relational DNA. Um, so, so let's just begin with a really short and brief, uh, you know, what is attachment theory? And, um, you know, basically uh, attachment theory divides the world into these three groups, right? Um, you're either securely attached which uh, means that you know you're, you fundamentally know that you're loved, you are deserving of love, you're good at loving others, and you likely have healthy, happy love relationships. Now, uh, what we found is this tends to be fairly uh, rare, um, and especially in those first seven years that we develop, those are really pivotal developmental years, that if you at any point in your development growing up questioned whether you were loved or lovable, uh, and the answer wasn't just a resounding yes with no pause or hesitation, mm. then you're likely part of the other two categories. So rather than being securely attached to your parents and to love itself, um, you tend to become insecurely attached. So just really briefly, and many of you, I imagine, if you came to this webinar, know about this theory, but real quickly, um, an insecure attached person um, can either tend towards the anxious patterning or the avoidant patterning. So let's take a look at the anxious patterning. So that would mean in those first seven years and, and really ongoingly, you did question whether you were loved or lovable. And uh, if, you, if you've grown up with some of this patterning, uh, and see if you recognize yourself as I, as I describe it, you know, it's really that uh, these people fundamentally um, fear abandonment. And, you know, if you've got the anxious pattern and you might doubt if you're loved um, and you might continually um, address that by closing the gap between yourself and those that you love, often leaving uh, loved ones with a feeling that they are, that you're needy and smothering and clinging onto them, right? <laughs> So someone who has the anxious pattern um, might think that love is threatened, um, you know, and, and, and this patterning is going to sort for the evidence of this, even when there is none, but they're going to think that, you know, even when your pattern, your partner is just expressing normal, healthy autonomy, like let's say uh, wanting to spend a weekend apart mm -hmm. or having a different interest or a different hobby or wanting to sleep without touching on a hot night because you're just sweating and maybe you're on the other side of the bed, um, you're, you know, or maybe not even being in the mood from time to time. You know, these kinds of what I would call just normal behaviors for any in two individuated free beings. Mm. Um, if you're not anxious, you might um, have that as just normal. But if you are anxious, you might 
sort for the evidence that that means somehow that your partner may leave you, abandon you, mm -hmm. leaving you helpless and alone and create a feeling of kind of attachment, uh, insecure attachment and neediness. So that's really the anxious patterning. And I just want to say before, um, before you discount that you have this patterning, that it, it, it's, a, um, it's a continuum. So even if you're not on the extreme end where you know, every amount of this kind of behavior is one that you're questioning, you might be doing this in very small and subtle ways. So you might have, you know, a modest amount of this anxious patterning if, if you do get a little bit insecure uh, when some of these kind of normal patternings happen in a relationship. So that's the anxious pattern. So just look and see if any of the any of that patterning fits you at any point in relationships. So I, I just wanted to add, I, you know, I can't yeah. tell you how many of our participants in our Evolving Love workshops before they do the Evolving Love work, the, yeah. um, the, the curriculum, they'll come and they'll say, you know, I'm just, uh, my relationship would be great, but I, he doesn't love me or she just doesn't love me. And mm -hmm. they'll say, well, why, you know, why what, is that? What's your evidence? Yeah, how do yeah, you know? <laughs> what lets you know that he doesn't love you? And it will be things like, well, um, you know, he doesn't, uh, you know, he, he doesn't, um, come home when he says he wants, you know, he's going to, or she doesn't, she says she's going to text me and then she doesn't text me. And I have to text her five or six times before she texts me back, which that those kinds of pieces of evidence are so much more likely to be about your patterning than about whether you love each other. Um, right. That, uh, that it can trick you. Right. Right. So just, just notice if you've ever said those things or thought those things and really questioned whether you were loved by your partner, because that's really what both of these patterns are doing. You know, they both decided at a very young age that they weren't sure whether they were loved and lovable and both patterns arise out of fear, but they have a very different way of handling that fear. So let's look at the avoidant really quick. So an insecurely attached person that has the avoidant patterning, you know, fundamentally fear what I would call engulfment right? Uh, they doubt if they can love fully and they continue to try to create more distance between themselves and those they love, often leaving their loved ones feeling um, like they're aloof or standoffish or running away, uh, afraid of intimacy. There's a common one you hear, he's afraid of intimacy, she's afraid of intimacy. So someone who has the avoidant pattern might think that freedom and individuality um, is, is being threatened all the time um, when their partner is just expressing really normal, healthy closeness. You know, things like uh, wanting to interrupt your work for a second um, with a kiss, um, you know, or a loving text, or wanting to spend the night, multiple nights in a row together because they're just enjoying being with you. Mm -hmm. You know, that if you've got a, an avoidant patterning, you're going to sort for, wow, she's really engulfing me, I have no space, or so is he. Um, you know, you might uh, uh, experience um, wanting to drive together in the same car uh, rather than arrive separately, you know, as as uh, an avoidant patterning. Um, uh, maybe it's wanting to hold hands um, or walk arm in arm. So these, you know, what, what I would consider fairly normal behaviors, if you have an avoidant patterning, some of these behaviors might start creating, creating that alarm bell and have you worried that somehow you're not allowed to be a separate, autonomous, free being, and that's being encroached, mm -hmm. right? And when you start to worry that your freedom is being encroached, your autonomy is being cro encroached, and you're feeling engulfed by your partner, um, then you know, you're going to run away as fast as you can and avoid that connection. Um, so just see if you can see these partner in yourself um, and in your partner, um, even past or present. And um, you know, one of the key key things that, that Brian and I want to bring to the attachment theory conversation um, that may or may not be stressed in the books that we read about it and in the therapists and work that, that, you know, that we've talked to is that it correctly places the responsibility for the dynamic on the person having the pattern. So it's easy to understand that if you feel crowded in by your lover, it's more likely that you're actually insecure and avoidant than that they are crowding you in. And if, vice versa, if you're feeling like your partner never pays enough attention to you, it's actually more likely that you're insecurely anxious than anything your partner might be doing in reality. So this is really asking you, all of you listening, um, to really check and see if some of the behavior that you formerly really blamed your partner on is more likely your own patterning 
Now, you two might be polarizing each other. It might be true that one of you is avoidant and one of you is anxious, but really the, the gem for you in this call, what, what there is to really look at is your own patterning and assume it's yours because if you were securely attached, even with someone who is anxious and avoidant, you still wouldn't be interpreting their behaviors as meaning you're any less love, mm -hmm. loved or lovable. Or any less free or you Or know, any less free, yeah. right, exactly. So let's, let's real quick just um, yeah. go, to the ch go to the chat and type in, uh, if you think that you are uh, mostly secure, you can say secure. Yeah. If you're like 90% or 95% secure or more, say secure. Uh, if you think you're probably more anxious, you write the word anxious. Uh, if you uh, if you think you're more uh, avoidant, avoidant, you can yep. just write, I'm out of here. No, you can write, <laughs> you write I'm, I'm avoidant. Leaving. I'm leaving. They didn't avoid. show up. Right, they're gone. <laughs> Uh, or if you know that you're both anxious mm -hmm. and avoidant all the time, you can say both. Yeah. So um, just go ahead and write in uh, what um, you know what feels most true for you, uh, so that so we and know they're that, coming in. Yeah, we can see that you're uh, that you're resonating. We got a few more anxious than than the avoidance, but we're seeing some both. We got a couple <laughs> yep, couple secure. So, somebody's out of here. We got right. out of here. Yeah. Now this is where we thought we might do a little matchmaking, and and if any of you are single and avoidant, we're going to match you with the with single you. anxious people, so yeah. you can run your patterns on each other. Other. And that's, I mean, we're, we're joking a little bit, but the, that's the, great. the that's truth. Great. Keep them coming in. We like to kind of see, see how, uh, how, how, uh, how many people on there have, have one or the other. And um, really, I just want to say uh, it's courageous of you to uh, admit and see that patterning. And I think it's really the first step um, to healing and having a real adult relationship is by noticing where is that patterning actually having you stuck at, you know, two years old or six months old when that first pattern um, became yeah. you know a reality for you. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know I'm uh, you know so for me I'm uh, have more uh, anxious tendencies than avoidant tendencies, and I'm a lot more secure than I was uh, you know eight years ago when I met Jennifer, and that's yeah. part of why we're. Um, you know, we're so enthusiastic and so um, committed to bring this material to you because uh, one of the misunderstandings that we find, or um, I find, you know, when I was reading the book Attached, which was uh, here, we can actually even show you. Yeah, uh, uh, here's 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 one on the on the topic. This which was, you can read because it does a great description of each of these patterns if you want a really in depth yeah. thing. I, I've had a person tell me when they read it, like, oh wow, this book really understands. It. Who I am and how I am. Yeah, so. but what it doesn't do is uh, it, it kind of in, it indicates that once you're uh, that that um, the solution that's offered in the book is basically that you shouldn't date someone who is uh, uh, insecure, shouldn't date someone who's avoidant, shouldn't date someone who's anxious. Instead, find someone who's secure, and then you can have a secure relationship. And that kind of sounds like it's too late if you've already fallen in love and that you should leave your relationship if you're suffering from this pattern. And we just don't believe that. We, fa In fact, um, if you can get beyond the, the, the trick of the mind, uh, uh, you can actually make your insecure relationship the best teacher possible for both of you to find a secure love. And uh, the trick of the mind is when you think that um, because you identify your partner's pattern, Mm. that means you're not doing yours you know because I can recognize Jennifer's crazy that means I must be sane that's kind of the that's the trick because it's not true almost every time that your partner is exhibiting their pattern you're usually exhibiting the pattern uh, either your, your pattern just in this in the same exact degree um, so the trick is not okay Oh, I, I see Jennifer's pattern, but more like, can I see mine? Right. And that's yeah. the, if you could do that, then we believe any relationship, no matter where you start, can mature into a securely attached and healthy, uh, loving relationship. Yeah. I think what I want to add to that too is, I mean, just from our own love story and from almost every couple we've ever helped, um, you know, I, I, I've often said that, uh, you know, I didn't exist the version of me that stands today doing this incredible work with Brian around love, epic love, um, I didn't exist. And so I was basically created brick by brick in this relationship. So if I thought I had to be perfectly secure in order to even attempt to be in a relationship or only find a secure man, and, and he said, you know, he had a little bit of the anxious patterning, not heavily, but he had some right. of it for sure. 
um, then we would have never gotten together. And it's it's our belief that that evolutionary partnership and love is a crucible for transforming that. In fact, it's probably the only place that you can transform it because this kind of patterning requires you to have the mirror of someone to kind of show you and requires you to receive love in some of the, the very places that you haven't been able to love yourself. You know, having your partner love the parts of you that are anxious or clingy or needy or having a partner love the parts of you that are avoidant and running away does more to heal that pattern than almost anything else. So unlike many of the books that'll tell you find somebody secure or get yourself secure first and then go ahead and find a relationship. We're big believers in use your relationship in order to heal this dynamic. And, um, you know, some of you are single. Um, this is not to say that you don't do the inner work now. I think you should do the inner work now. We're going to give you a bunch of inner work to do that you can do alone. Um, and then in your next relationship, you'll find kind of the love that you need to further just relax and regulate your nervous system so that you can really, really end that pattern. So I just wanted to add that. So, um, and it's really, really important to, to realize that you don't have to be perfect or having solved this. It reminds me of an old, an old uh, transformationalist saying, uh, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. You, know, oh, yeah. you, you, you can always you can always go back and repattern what things mean to you, and therefore what uh, you know how you relate now about them. You know, so. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just going to say say about the next misunderstanding. Oh, so there was that was the first misunderstanding is right. that that the only way to to um, handle having an insecure attachment is to um, solve it on your own or date somebody secure, um, and so that's misunderstanding number one. But there's a second misunderstanding um, that just in countless conversations we've had. Um, that we just want to talk to you about in case you're confused. And I saw it in the chat window already, which uh, in some of the material you'll see them saying that you are born either anxious or avoidant, and that doesn't change because it happened to you in your childhood, and that's just who you are. That's your pattern, and it's a fixed thing until you address it and become secure. And, you know, our experience tells us otherwise in working with people. Our experience tells us that we're actually not a fixed thing, that if you're insecure, what tends to happen is that you polarize each other. So you'll you'll polarize your insecurities. So if you if you end if you are an anxious person and you do date someone who tends towards a little bit more avoidance, you will polarize towards more anxious and they will polarize towards more avoidant. But if you're anxious and you end up dating another anxious, uh, one of you might be slightly less anxious and you could get, actually get polarized to seemingly be more avoidant, you know, and, or, or, or flip based on the dynamics in the relationship. What's fixed might be that you don't have a fair, a secure, adult, healthy relationship to being loved and lovable. You can polarize in different relationships. I've had relationships where I felt more avoidant and relationships where I felt more anxious. Mm -hmm. And most of the people I talk to have said the same. Um, so, you know, so there's this misconception that you never change and that you'll always be that way. And we've just seen too much evidence to the contrary yeah. in ourselves and in participants in our workshops and our retreats to believe this. So um, that's just another misconception. So yeah. if you're having trouble trying on this theory and seeing any validity to it because of that, um, really, there's a lot of value in looking at this patterning because it is very explanatory. It's got a lot of explanatory power in explaining a dynamic that's super common. Um, just realize that you might be polarizing. Yeah. So you know you've got some insecure patterns that are ingrained in some of the ways that you love and, and some of the ways that you feel love and some of the ways that you love others. Uh, so what do you do about it? And, and the first thing to do is to realize that that uncomfortable feeling that comes up. You know, if you're anxious, the feeling is like, they don't love me or I need, they're not filling the gap. And Abandonment, if, if rejection. You're, if you're avoidant, the feeling might be like, you're crowding me, there's too much, you know, I, I, need, I need my independence, I don't, you know, this, I'm being trapped. But whatever it is, that uncomfortable feeling, and those are both the different sides of the same coin. First thing is to recognize that it's actually your pattern that's causing the feeling, not your partner's actions. So it's not the text messages they sent you or them wanting to drive with you or them refusing to drive with you or the set text message they didn't send you. That actually isn't causing your feeling. 
what's causing your feeling is your pattern. And I know that that's hard to get your mind around it. We were working with a, a coaching client of ours who's got a, a avoidant patterning and, you know, kept coming to us saying, listen, I, you know, uh, I, I, I don't want her to spend the night. He was dating a woman for several months. I don't want to spend the night because when uh, I wake up, there she is, and that makes me feel trapped. And then she's like, wants to like brush her teeth, and she wants to, you know, and it's just, I, it's just too much. Um, and so, in his, in his perspective, her being there, brushing her teeth, was causing him to feel that way. Yeah, she was too much was the problem. Exactly. Right. But what was true actually is um, that she was a mirror for him. And the, the blinding light of that uh, uncomfortable feeling was actually coming from him, bouncing off her mirror, and he was being blinded by it or made uncomfortable. And then his reaction was wanting to cover up the mirror. And you know his evidence for why that's true is because when he's not around any mirrors, when there's nobody, then he doesn't have that uncomfortable feeling. He feels great. It's only when the mirrors come around, then he starts to feel this blinding. So he, mm. so he starts to blame the mirrors. You know, and one of our favorite te uh, teachers, Bashar, says if if you look in the mirror and you see yourself as a frowning person, upset, like this, you don't go to the mirror and try to force the mirror to smile. Mm -hmm. You realize that if you smile, then you'll see reflected back to you a smile. So the first step is really that simple, to recognize that the discomfort doesn't come from your partner's actions. It, it comes from your pattern. Um, it, it, the the way an insecure pattern works is that it literally interprets the normal ebbs and flows of a loving relationship as warning signs that something is wrong. I'm going to say that again. The way the insecure pattern works is it interprets the normal ebbs and flows of a loving relationship as warning signs that something's wrong. So your part, pattern will have you feel as though something's wrong when it really isn't. And that's the first, when you realize, oh, my feeling that something's wrong isn't necessarily reliable. It may be that something's wrong, but it may be that nothing's wrong and it's just my pattern giving me bad information. Mm. That, that is that key first step. Yeah, I, God, I, love, I love this piece. And, and all of you listening, I, I, I'm gonna say this one piece again, because what Brian just said is, is, is one of those things. It's like a ton of bricks moment. It really, when you really get it, it can do a lot of the work of unwinding this pattern, which is distinguish your feelings from your partner's actions, right? That's how he started. It's like, what's one of the first ways of handling insecure attachment? Distinguish the feelings you're having and your partner's behaviors or actions. If you if you think that your feelings are are caused by their actions, then you're not going to see the patterning. If you distinguish, oh, these feelings I'm having are the patterning, they're not as because of their behavior, then you have kind of a chance to really take a look under the hood at the patterning. And, and we're going to dive deeper here. This is just the beginning piece of how to handle being in a secure attachment. But mm -hmm. just underline that if you're writing it down, distinguish your feelings from your partner's actions. Yeah, because um, nothing else will, the rest of the process doesn't really work if you haven't done that piece first, right? It's like your, it's like your, uh, your uh, uh, cost of entry. Yeah, yeah. So, so if that's the case, right, then the natural next question that, you know, I'd imagine you'd ask or that and it's at least that we were asking ourselves is in the moment, you know, when I'm having that uncomfortable feeling, whether it's anxious or avoidant, um, you know, something that something's wrong here, um, you know, the pattern's telling me to handle it in one way. But what's the better way of handling it, you know? And so, like, if you're anxious, the pattern is telling you to, like, cling tightly to your partner, right? And to look for the evidence that you'll be abandoned and rejected and, and, and left helpless, right? If you're avoidant, the pattern is telling you to, like, run away and push your partner away and get space and, and really disconnect, right? So that's what the pattern is telling you. And, and we actually want to upgrade the behavior um, in that moment particularly because it, it'll feel very natural to you. You'll feel like there's a common right that's being violated. Like, of course, I want to be free and independent and you're violating that and you're going to think that the, their behavior is the violation rather than your patterning. So one of the, the biggest lessons that we are wanting to teach you is to reduce the fear in your system mm -hmm. so that you can actually hear your own intuition. 
And so how do you do that? Like, how do you reduce the fear in the system? Um, and to us, uh, it's something that we call self-regulating, right? Self-regulation. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, we have for you, if you stay to the end of this, um, an incredible resource that we spent a lot of time on putting together that basically helps you unwind that through taking you through a meditation exercise, a self-regulating meditation exercise that's combining sound. It combines this uh, imagery that's been specifically designed to help reduce the fear, and it combines some affirmation and belief rewrites. So we're going to give that you access to that if you stay to the end. But let me talk about self-regulation for a moment. Um, if that's not a common term to you, it's something that we've talked about with Annie Lala and Evan mm -hmm. Pagan, two very good friends of ours as well. But really, it's it's in the moment. So there you are. So call up a moment in your life when you felt either anxious or avoidant. So just go ahead and do this with me now. Um, remember that moment. So be in the situation, you know, where whatever your partner was doing, whatever you were doing, feeling the feelings. You can see the location. Maybe you can see yourself there. Um, and so what I want you to do. Um, as you're having that experience in the moment, um, but even just on this phone call, as you recall a moment, is that you fade the situation out. You fade the location out. You fade out your partner, right? You fade out all of the supposed causes, right? And then all you notice that's left, now that the picture doesn't contain any other elements in it, all you see is basically yourself. And then your reaction without anything else around you. So you can really see the pattern. So there's nothing else but you, right? And, and in a very real sense, if, if you don't mind me getting a little metaphysical, you know, uh, our favorite teacher Bashar says, you are the universe you formerly thought you're inside of. One of my favorite quotes, because it really gets to the fact that actually this is more literally true than you realize, that it is just you. Everything else is something that's a mirror. So now there you are, and you see your reaction for what it is, right? And so now, as you fade that out, your body can naturally regulate itself if you let it. You know, what prevents you from self-regulating is having your mind caught up in the future and in making connections to that are external to you, that there's all of these things outside of yourself that you have no control over that are, are, are making your state um, dependent on those external forces and and even with your mind attached to a future that hasn't happened you know if you're an avoidant you're worried about in the future being engulfed or in the future being left mm -hmm. mostly if you realize you could be in the moment in that present moment you're actually not being left and abandoned when they didn't grab your hand in the movie theater mm -hmm. And when he didn't text you within 10 minutes of your text. Or 10 days. <laughs> or 10. <laughs> You're still not being abandoned. Right, no. right, right. And no. so, uh, you know, so the first thing is you fade everything else out but you. And you allow yourself to be really, really present and realize that your state is not dependent on anything outside of yourself. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to teach you a process at the end that literally walks you through self-regulating your nervous system, centering yourself, balancing yourself, and reasserting what we call your organismic rights, some of the belief patterns that have gotten um, really underdeveloped in you uh, in this, this process, this self-regulating process that we've got for you. And, and, and so in that process, I'm not going to give you the whole process now because I actually want you to experience it. You'll be bringing your nervous system back to its relaxed and centered state, reminding you of what's actually happened, not, not what you think might happen in the future, but what's actually happening in the here and now. So, um, you know, first of all, I guess I want you to type into the chat window just a number between one and ten with how um, how capable you feel of self-regulating in the moment. I want you to be honest. So you're in the moment, you're feeling really anxious or right. feeling really patterns avoidant. The pattern's totally got you. It, you know, the you're you're triggered. In that moment, how are able are you? to self-regulate right now. Let's just do a number from, from one to 10. Um, and uh, so let's see those come in. So um, 
uh, that's awesome. So ten would be a really, a really great ability to uh, to self regulate. Tens, nines, three, four, six, sevens, five, five tens, five point seven, three. nine. That's great. Five, three. Good. You guys are good at assessing. We love these one to yeah. tens because it, it it allows you to really objectively look at kind of where you're at without um, language that's hard to decipher. So. Um, we want to see if we can increase this number by the end of the rest of this call. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have about, we've done about 30 minutes so far. We're going to have about an hour left on the call. We're going to increase that number wherever you started. And for the tens, you guys are doing awesome. Uh, we hope to give you guys some gifts too. So, yeah. um, so the reason it works is, I just want to explain, when, when you're not self-regulating, uh, what's happening is y when you use another person to regulate, the anxious person basically says, I'm not okay unless my partner shows me love in some particular way. And so they, they are asking their partner, hey, will you regulate my nervous system by showing me love in that particular way? And then when the partner does, the person relaxes and you call that a good relationship somehow. Uh, and then when the partner doesn't, you freak out and say it's not okay. The anxious person does the same thing, or the avoidant person does the same thing. Uh, listen, I need you to leave me alone. I need you to give me space. I need you to do these things, because if you don't, then my nervous system is okay, isn't okay. If you interrupt me, if you do these other things, then my nervous system isn't okay, which means that your nervous system state it, you've given it away to your partner. You're you're having them regulate you, regulate you. And this is your nervous system that's inside your own body yeah. that you have somehow given total power and control over to your environment, to your partner. So why why this works is it, it that's sort of like going around with a plug, like let's say you have a lamp that you want to turn on, and you're and you're plugging in it into not into an electrical outlet where you have all the power but into a pile of dough into a bowl into you know it's just plugging into all the sources where you can't actually get that internal regulation because your partner isn't in here your partner's out there so the way to plug into the proper power source is to fade everything out else out because your proper power source really is an internal that's where the deficit is but it's also where the surplus is you have the capability of meeting your own needs in every moment from a nervous system level. You can literally love yourself as much as you need to be loved in every moment. And then once you're filled up, you can exchange that love with a partner. So that fading it out, that, that's why it works. The fading everyone else out and focusing only on your own nervous system, you can restore balance. And then you won't be acting from your pattern you'll be acting from a, a regulated nervous system and guess what when you have a regulated nervous system and you want your partner to hold your hand she's mm. she's much more likely to do that than if you need her to hold your hand in order for yeah. you to be okay yeah. so that's how those patterns kind of work together and that's why this this self-regulation works um, um, yeah we end up inadvertently repelling you know and, and creating the self-fulfilling prophecy you know the more avoidant you are uh, the the less your partner is going to confirm that you have your space and freedom that you want and autonomy that you want and the more anxious you are the more likely your partner is going to reject you and and, and move away even yeah. if they are secure because you're not going to you're going to be asking the universe to mirror back to you um, your own lack or lovability yeah. lack of lovability in that moment so yeah the, these patterns if if unchecked they really prove themselves right over mm -hmm. time you know yeah. the, the avoidant person will get smothered the anxious person will get left if you allow the pattern just to continue to repeat itself but in the meantime how can you tell the difference between like oh this is my pattern and your partner actually not showing up for you the way you want you know maybe your partner is interrupting you and you don't like that and it, and you're upset and and it's your pattern but also your partner's doing something you don't like and so it gets confusing how how really can you tell the difference um and uh the difference when your nervous system is regulated and you've got you drain all the fear out of the system you're not thinking about the future anymore and you can really examine how am I feeling? What's true for me right now? What do I need? What do I want? Then, uh, then you can actually make a simple request, an adult request uh, uh, of your of your partner, uh, and uh, and you can say, oh, you know, I didn't like um, how we didn't spend the night together for three nights, so I'd like to spend more time together. And your partner can say, okay, that sounds great, because you're again, you're not running the pattern. Right, or 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 say not, and it won't you won't necessarily make that mean. Yeah. 
that you're not loved and being left and abandoned and rejected and help, left helpless. So, because oh, like, if you say no, that doesn't mean something about me. It just means that's not your preference. Yeah. So, so again, just to go over what we said so far, distinguish your pattern from your partner's behavior. This is the first thing to do to handle um, insecure attachment. The second is this this thing we're calling self regulation, which we've started to describe here, and we're going to give you, um, you know, an audio and video uh, resource to help you actually self regulate. It's really powerful. Um, and, you know, I just want to say that in secure or adult relationships, you know, your needs and your desires can be exchanged without requiring your partner to do that in a particular way to maintain your well-being. So, you know, each partner is self-regulated and the natural ebbs and flows of love and connection don't become what I would call catastrophized mm -hmm. into doomsday future thinking. So in a healthy, secure relationship, mm -hmm. you just exchange your needs just and your desires. Like these, it's just easy thing to just say, oh, hey, you know, I'd like to stay over. Oh, I'd like um, a couple days to myself. And mm -hmm. the, the way that that's received, you know that it doesn't mean anything bad about you, no matter how it's received. These are just plainly your needs because you mm -hmm. realize you have every right to need both the connection that you want uh, and the love that you want and the freedom that you want because these are fundamental mm -hmm. human needs, both sides. So there's nothing wrong with needing either of these things. And if you have an adult secure relationship, you realize that and um, don't need to kind of cling on. So that's that's uh, you know one of the major major pieces around that. Before moving on, I just wanted to say one more yeah. thing about the meditations. So these uh, meditations are the free videos and free audios, the gifts that were that you can get at the end of this uh, webinar. And to me, they're just really exciting because in the process that Jennifer and I have used to become more and more secure, mm -hmm. to become less and less triggered, not just with each other, but with life, to be more and more assured and, and comfortable with those natural ebb and flows so that, you know, wild things can happen. I, I still know uh, without a, a shadow of doubt that I'm absolutely loved and that uh, I'm absolutely loving and I don't have to be concerned with that. And it's just that, that is so relaxing. And how we did it was, in that moment of trigger, when the catastrophizing was happening and the mind is racing, we talked ourselves through essentially um, a meditation process uh, where we put our attention on different specific things that reordered our nervous system and brought ourselves back to centered in a way that's specifically tuned to undo the, One or the other pattern. Patterns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what we've given you is is a recording of uh, it's actually Jennifer's voice because I love her voice it's amazing of Jennifer's voice walking you through exactly what she would say to herself and exactly what I would say to myself when we were healing these patterns and so you can get this right in your ear um, and you will the the design is for you to have it on your phone or with you at any time and if you are in a triggered moment you can just hit play uh, and then you'll reset your own nervous system with a little bit of help from Brian and Jennifer. So I'm, I'm sure. excited to give you that. That's, sure, that's sure. Later. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's it's I think of it like a permission slip. It's it's you know you have this permission slip that you can use in the form of this audio to regulate both your neurology and your biology and your physiology, right? And you you can allow the recording to to do that such that the next time you open your mouth, you're in a totally regulated state, you're all the way resourced, and you can actually have a healthy relationship to the being loved and lovable and your needs. So um, just moving on to the next piece that I, I, I feel like is an important part of this dialogue that I don't often hear mm -hmm. um, from experts on the topic, which is you know, this question that you might be thinking, so once the moment passes, um, what can I do to gradually change over time my tendency to go into the pattern in the first place so that I don't need to actually continue to use this meditation to self-regulate, for yeah, instance, exactly. or or, uh, or to apologize afterward for all of the uh, heartache and pain have that, it, yeah, have it. Yeah, that, that uh, you might be creating with this patterning or that your partner is creating for you. So, um, you know, what I see as, as really fundamental, the, the core of what's creating these patterns to begin with is that um, you're likely missing some of what I would call the key organismic rights, um, which are really meant to develop in early childhood. And, you know, this is a concept uh, developed by the Austrian psychoanalyst named Wilhelm Reich. Wilhelm Reich, sorry about that. Um, and it outlines a series of developmental stages that every child goes through. And what he outlines is these five organismic rights 
right? Um, and they are the right to exist, right? You as a, as a being have a right to exist. This is the first right that you develop in those first few months of childhood. And believe it or not, some people don't fully develop an adult mature right to exist. Mm -hmm. And you can tell because they usually have really thin, frail bodies. Like they literally can't even like arrive in a body and take up any space because they don't really have a right to exist. And the mm -hmm. entire world around them is unsafe um, and they're afraid so that's just an example but there are five of these um, and there's something that you can't do do without and they can't be taken away um, they are part uh, literally of the fabric of being alive in a body in this reality and they are your organismic rights and if you're healthy you've developed a really healthy, solid relationship to these rights. Um, and so you can't be, you know, can't be without them. And when a child is less than completely successful and na navigating through um, a stage of these and each one builds on the other, um, it's believed that the results get stored in your body as body armoring and patterning. And that energy gets stuck in the pattern and you form kind of survival-based personality patterning mm -hmm. um, based on an, an underdeveloped organismic right. And this unresolved parts of us, um, they aren't fully available to us in the next stages as we move into adulthood. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to talk a little bit about it. I know this is a little heady maybe, but um, I find this material really fascinating. And to me, it's key because there's some rewriting of your relational DNA that we want to help you do, um, you know, especially when we get to work with you live, either one-on-one -on -one or in the workshops. And we've got one coming up that we want to invite you to where we really get to rewrite this with you. Mm -hmm. um, but let's look at some of the organismic rights that are particularly um, underdeveloped in someone with anxious and avoidant patterning. And so one of Wilhelm Reich's uh, organismic rights um, that's really alive for those that have an anxious patterning is the right to need, right? And so what a healthy person believes is that I have a right to need and my needs aren't problematic for myself, for others, and for the environment that I'm in, right? I have a right to need. Um, and that's just solid. Like there's no questioning it. There's no, well, maybe I don't, or uh, maybe if I need, I'll be left. Like there's a lot of unhealthy patterning that most people have that when they, if you look, if they look themselves in the face and said, I have a right to need, they wouldn't be able to do that in a relaxed, regulated state where their nervous system wasn't kind of reacting to, well, wait a minute, maybe I don't. And I have evidence that when I am, express my needs, you know, the world doesn't support me, so I don't actually have a right to need. So we form at a very young age, either a patterning where we realize we have a right to need or we don't and we question it. So when someone has a poorly developed right to need, they believe I myself have no needs and I'm going to give and give and give and I'll live without reaching and contacting the world by giving. And if I ever really need someone, I'll probably be abandoned. And helpless so it's safer for me to not really need and just be a giver um, so I'm safe as long as I can hold on to you uh, mm -hmm. and if I expect to be myself and still be wanted I'll likely be abandoned and helpless mm -hmm. like some of these and they might sound exaggerated to you but if you listen in those moments when you're clinging you might recognize that 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 there's a young, young version of yourself that has some of these unhealthy, underdeveloped needs uh, or right to need. And, and they're saying these things about, about, about mm -hmm. you. This, this voice in your head is saying this kind of thing about you. So that you can't believe that if you are yourself and that you do express your needs, you'll be abandoned, rejected, helpless, and left. Mm -hmm. um, imagine how unsafe the world is to express the need um, and and actually have it be met if that was how you held it. And so just notice how healthy do you feel like your right to need is, mm -hmm. right? Just take a look and, you know, even on a scale of one to 10, um, 10 is like, you don't question it. Of course I have a right to need, like, yes, I don't at all worry that anyone will abandon me or reject me if I state my needs. You know, that would be like a 10 and a one would be like, it would be the most unsafe thing on the planet to actually tell somebody that mm -hmm. I needed something because either I think I'm weak and less than for even having the need because that would be the overcompensation 
or I'm going to be left and, and, and help less if I do. Mm -hmm. So there are compensations and overcompensations to this. So see if either of that relates. So see if you can't even have a need because ugh, those people are needy. And so you don't even let yourself have needs. Um, or if your needs just feel unsafe. I don't, I don't just, believe in needs. Yeah. yeah, I don't believe in needs. Um, <laughs> so and don't and really don't fall for the cover story here. The, the, yeah. the cover story is... No, no, no. I, I have. A, there's nothing wrong with me. I have a fully developed right to need. I have a very good childhood. I was a very loving family. It's just that other people, blah, 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 blah. Other people aren't good at, at sensing my needs, or other people tend to be insensitive. Or so. Anytime you think yeah. that there's a problem around need, or other people are too needy, and that's bad. Anytime you have a energy around need. Um, but you're thinking it's the other people and that you're just fine. That's the cover story. And if you look underneath the cover story, what you'll find is a part of you believes you have a right to need and another part of you questions that. And that schism between those two parts is what creates the, uh, the anxious patterning. Yeah. And uh, in addition to the self-regulating um, meditations that we have for you around this we actually have an exercise like, like we call it like the maintenance exercise mm -hmm. so there's the thing to listen to while you're in the anxious or avoiding patterning and then there's this maintenance exercise that's designed to help restore a healthy adult right mm -hmm. to need that we want you to do for the course of the next four or five weeks because after that I, we feel like if you really really will actually do the exercise that we're going to give you you'll have a completely different relationship to your right to need mm -hmm. um, and that came yeah. from an, another program that we did which was many thousands of dollars four thousand yeah. dollars or something like this yeah. and it was one of the things that people reported was the most effective part of that entire program yeah, really powerful. Yeah, so i'm excited to offer that for you guys for free too yeah, just imagine healing this once and for all, how you will approach your life, yourself, your your projects, your relationships, your teammates, um, just to have a healthy adult right to need. Um, and sadly, it's rare. Um, so um, just realize you're not alone. Um, so let's look at the other organismic right that would be more, um, more tied to the uh, avoidant patterning. And, um, you know, Wilhelm Reich also has, um, uh, as one of the basic organismic rights that builds on top of the right to exist and the right to need, which is the right to be um, independent, right? The right to be autonomous and still belong, right? This is like the right to be separate and somehow not lose your belonging or not be loved. Um, and so this right for this independence um, is another basic human need. You know, we are separate individuals. So our separateness is part of what allows us to even relate to begin with. If we were all one undifferentiated consciousness, we wouldn't actually have a separate experience and be able to relate around it. So as we come into this form, into this body, we of course have a right to be autonomous and to um, still belong uh, and not somehow be cast out because we are a different being. So, um, you know, what a healthy person believes if they have a healthy right um, to be autonomous or independent, um, you know, what they, they have is that they have a right to be separate and still belong and no amount of closeness now would threaten my ultimate freedom or autonomy. If I was healthy here, I, that's what I would believe. Like, no mm -hmm. amount of closeness is going to threaten my freedom. You know, I can rely on others without becoming beholden to them. And belonging doesn't threaten my independence. Those are two different things. And in fact, if, if you're really healthy, you'll realize the belonging um, can strengthen you, that your environment can support you more fully to be able to explore independently than if you were off out on your own, alone and separate and by yourself. Um, you know, we are by our nature tribal beings. So uh, we realize that we um, are really more interdependent than independent as a deeper truth. Right. I mean, we are dependent, interdependent with the planet in order to survive. And that interdependence is good. Um, so anyway, one, what someone who has a poorly developed right to be autonomous and independent believes that, you know, if I had that, I would believe that um, uh, I'll live without feeling um, helpless and contact the world via controlling helpfulness. So I guess what that means is I can do anything myself. So I don't want to rely on anyone else. Um, and if, if so, um, I will, uh, if I reach out for support, 
I'll be used, I'll be manipulated, I'll be humiliated, I'll be helpless. So I need to keep my distance. I need to not be supported by anyone else and just be on my own because if I go down that path, all that's left is for me to to be somehow my identity be subverted and manipulated and helpless. Mm -hmm. So that's the right. And these rights really can be reprogrammed um, by giving yourself the loving nutrients that were in too short supply during your upbringing, whether you realize that uh, as a child or now or not. In one sense, a part of us says like, I didn't get the love that I needed growing up. So I'm going to get it now from my partner, which has the effect of meeting your partner with a sense of lack. So what we are saying is instead, um, we want you to give that part of you what it needs now so it can love and be loved by your partner uh, without compensating for a historical deficit. Uh, And by the way, that deficit's totally, totally invisible to your partner. So they don't see that whole equation. They just see the neediness and they they don't get it. Um, So you want to do the the maintenance exercise that we've uh, that we've included at the end of this webinar uh, once a day five days per uh, per week for five weeks and you will have a massive shift in the baseline of those organismic rights the right to need and the right to mm-hmm, be autonomous mm-hmm. yeah and you know five weeks for us is is like the minimum amount of time to really repattern your neurology enough so that these new beliefs as we give you a way to repattern that physiology and neurology with this exercise which you're going to see um, um, you kind of regroove a new pattern. So what do you do about these patterns? Not when they're yours, but when they're in your partner, you know, that's another question is like, uh, we've been talking a lot about how to recognize your own partner and what to do. Um, but, uh, it's probably true if you are anxious or avoidant that you're with a partner that is anxious and avoidant. Mm-hmm. Occasionally avoidance get together, although not for very long, yeah. <laughs> uh, occasionally anxious get people get together and they just try to merge into one blob of humanity. Um, but most, the most common is that anxious and avoidance find they each attract other. Each other yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so what do you do? Um, you know, first of all, um, just like you have to self-regulate, when you observe your partner's beha- the pattern of stick behavior, you have to re- remember that their pattern really is not about you. Um, if you're making their behavior personal, then you're going to identify uh, as not enough or as too much. That identification is what gives you the feeling of insecurity that leads to reasserting your own pattern, right? So that, that's what kicks yours off. Um, so in secure or adult relationships, your partner behavior doesn't ever mean something about you. I'm going to say that again. In secure or adult relationships, your partner's behavior never means something about you. Uh, and if you're interpreting it that way, that interpretation is just your pattern that you must breathe through again. So it's, you know, when, it, when uh, I'm with Jennifer and she's in her pattern, uh, it doesn't happen very often, less and less. But when that happens, then... Uh, what's what's there to do is love her there and just just be present, observe that she's having it, mm-hmm. um, and kind of have the patience for her to work it out. Uh, I, I can't solve it for her; only she can solve it. Um, but I am not going anywhere, and uh, and I don't need to I don't need to prove something or exert my pattern or do yeah, my yeah. Part. And if you're secure in that moment, you're not getting triggered, so it's easy for you to stay present and be yeah. a loving presence as they kind of reparent themselves through some of these processes that we're sharing with you. So it's not up to you to be their mommy and daddy and reparent them. It's up to you to create a loving environment that allows them to reparent themselves so that you don't kind of become that figure and and create an unhealthy um, dynamic, which is a whole other other webinar we could do. (laughs) And And it's really important to stay true to your feelings to what's true for you. So if your partner is anxious, let's say, and they're wanting attention from you, and you could think that it's the right move as a loving thing to give them the attention they want to soothe them. But if it's actually not true for you that that's what you want, um, you have to find a way to be with them, to not disconnect, to let them know that the love is there, but that the attention that they're seeking is just not available right now, even though the love is there. And that retraining of the love's not going away, even though the symbol that you thought you wanted for the love is, that retraining for an anxious person is incredibly healing. Likewise, for an avoidant person, uh, you're not, your freedom is not compromised here. My presence 
is just a symbol of love. It's not a symbol of you being trapped. You're still free. So if you can have those two messages be sent at once, that's basically the best thing you can do um, to, to, you know, with the partners exhibiting their pattern. And for me, you know, this love is a pretty long game. I'm, I'm in it for decades and decades with Jennifer. So mm. if it takes a week or a month or a year or 10 years to heal one particular pattern of hers or mine, that's just a privilege to be side by side with her during that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's something we both hold so dear is that being in a relationship is such a privilege. Yeah. And the minute that you try to frame it as just a lot of hard work and um, obligation, um, you're really losing sight of how lucky you are. I mean, there are single people on this call and billions and billions of people that are, uh, that are alone and don't have a partner. And so just realize how lucky you are if you have someone to walk down the path together. And if you're single, just realize, you know, what, um, what privilege and play it is to begin down that path with someone so that you don't take it for granted um, when it does come into your life uh, at, at whatever time timing um, that happens. So, you know, you might be thinking, uh, you know, this sounds like a great way for me to work on my relationship on my own. But, you know, because uh, we've talked about a lot of the inner work mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. that you can do on your own to self-regulate and really fade everything out and work on it yourself and redo all of these organismic rights and repattern all of that. But so the question might be, how do I unwind specific fights that I'm having with my partner? Mm -hmm. So if I'm in a relationship and this is coming up with my partner, how do I bring up difficult conversations with my partner without escalating into a fight, mm -hmm. right? Because how often does this patterning come up and create a fight regardless of what side of the patterning you are? And even if one of you is secure, it can still create some fights. So, you know, for that, um, you know, it's our belief that you need a really effective conflict resolution process. Um, and that that's, those are really hard to come by. I haven't seen very many people do them quite like we do. I'm, I'm actually really, really proud of um, you know, how Brian and I have been adding to the field of love and relationship itself through a completely different evolutionary path through conflict. And so you need this kind of process. You know, you need one that's actually one is effective at resolving conflict for good and not just repairing the hurt feelings and doing the whole thing over and over again, right? Because there's more than one phase. There's the repairing it and then there's like resolving or restructuring your relationship afterward. So you need something that's effective, not just at repairing the hurt feelings, Things. Two, you need one where both of you really get your needs met, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't work when it's all one-sided. I mean, all of us have probably been in a relationship at least once where every fight seemed to be just about helping one side of the partnership get what they needed and then your needs didn't get met. We well, remember that the anxious pattern says like, oh, I, I don't have no needs. I'm just going to be giving. I'm mm -hmm. going to contact the world through giving. And so that really plays well into oh, yeah. so you're a, gonna have this one. like a one-sided <laughs> conflict resolution. Oh, I'm, I'm so good at conflict resolution. She's I gave my partner everything. I held space for them. I gave them everything they needed. Of course, I didn't get my needs met, but you know, what a surprise, you know. Forget that they didn't even bring them up. Right, exactly. <laughs> but, they, but they'll blame the other partner and 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 use that as evidence. So you need a, yeah, process it really. So you need a process, one that 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 resolves it really for good, um, and then one where both gets their needs met, and three, one that feels good to both partners, so that the conversation is one you always want to have, instead of the thing you're just like putting your hands through your hair, going, oh, do we have to do this again? Right, you actually want a process that you're excited to have that feels good. Yeah. So that's number three. Yeah, and number if the, if the, yeah. I was just going to say, if the if the conflict re resolution that you use with your partner sucks, then you're not going to resolve your conflicts because right. you're going <laughs> to avoid that. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then lastly, you want um, you know a, a way of handling um, these patterns and this conflict in your lives um, that gets underneath the surface of the issues and feels safe enough for both partners to actually be honest. And vulnerable and to be loved through the process mm -hmm. you can't have a successful long-term relationship without uh, a successful conflict resolution process and um, you know um, imagine if you held as a standard for your relationship that the 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 conflict re resolution process that you use had to be just as beautiful as your most romantic date you know and if you mm. can you know if you can look at the how beautiful healthy 
fun, engaging, and uplifting conflict resolution processes for a couple. You show me that, and I'll show you how long that couple's going to last. Because what otherwise it happens if the process is kind of broken, and most people have abysmal conflict resolution processes. Uh, if the if that process is broken, or they don't have it, or it's not rehearsed or not agreed to, then nothing gets resolved, and you just layer upon layer upon layer of conflict until the whole relationship feels like uh, it's a big weight, and then uh, and then it really does fall fall apart under its own weight, and that is really exactly why we designed the Evolving Love Workshop. Um, and there's one coming up in San Francisco on November 4th for singles and November 5th and 6th for couples. So is it all right if we talk with you guys a little bit about this workshop and just put into the chat that yes, you wanna hear about the workshop because I'd love to tell you about it, but we wanna make sure uh, that we have your consent. So let us know. Um, uh, I don't know which way we're going to chat. <laughs> up, up, good. Okay, good. And we've got some great questions. We've got some great questions. Great we're, questions too. Yeah, we're going to have some time for questions in a, yep. in a minute. Um, and, and yeah, it looks like, uh, uh, it looks like yes. So, um, so, so the workshop, let's talk about the workshop. I want you to imagine coming to an island in the San Francisco Bay for a deeply transformational experience and spending a day or two in person with us getting individual attention on the aspects of your relationship and your love life that matter most to you. And now imagine having the stage set for you in the most gentle and respectful way for you and your partner to permanently resolve your biggest recurring conflict without getting triggered. So either you're coming with your partner and you can do that, or you're coming alone and you're being set up to do that on phone calls and other interactions with them. Or, or maybe, you're looking at your pattern just as a single person exactly. on that, that one day to really do that inner work to unwind it so you don't bring it to the next relationship and yeah. the next one. One of our past participants in this last workshop said that he, that he couldn't believe it. He said, uh, we dove in and we actually solved the most important issue of our whole relationship. We've been married for years now and I just assumed we weren't ever gonna solve it. I was crying my eyes out because I heard her say and acknowledge things that I didn't even think she had any idea about. It was amazing. So that's the kind of uh, stage setting that, uh, that, that was gonna occur on this island in San Francisco in, in, in November. Yeah, and one of the, the reasons we wanted to create a kind of a, a live experience uh, with us, uh, one is we, we create magic in the room. I mean, you know, they, they, they call us a dynamic duo and there's a reason for that. And, but you know, the, the really what we noticed though, um, all of that aside is that the, there's a problem with relationships where we try to solve our hardest conflicts while we're triggered. Right. And we, we force the conversation and try and we're in the middle of both of us or, you know, or you look at any relationship trying to, to handle conflict and they're neither of them are, are resourced. Neither of them are bringing their best selves. Uh, and, and that's the moment in time when we're trying to resolve the biggest patterns that we have that we're not even seeing in ourselves. Um, and so we basically have no resources to act like a grown up in that moment. You know, we're acting two years old and throwing tantrums and, and, and really, really falling down to the lowest common denominator of where we've had arrested development. Um, and so at the Evolving Love Workshop, what we do is we create a space of fun and lightness and love and really what 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 we really bring to the table is raising the conversation into a more evolutionary context so that unlike maybe some some technologies and circling in therapy and some of these other things that we've seen uh, rather than kind of circling the drain inside of the same consciousness that has created the problem. Yeah, really examining it in detail mm -hmm. and getting into and understanding stuck it. Stuck on the lounge yeah, of why, exactly. as our friend Annie says, yeah. endlessly going round and round and you're kind of navel gazing and circling the drain. We have developed many, many ways of pulling you up and out into an evolutionary context that raises you both into a much higher order conversation. And the quality of the questions and conversations that you're having creates the relationship you're in. And so, you know, several couples in our last retreat were actually giggling and laughing as they were talking about topics that previously they thought were totally taboo subjects. Yeah, so that's what happens when you raise the conversations. The no-fly zones, you know. So maybe, right, right, yeah, <laughs> no-fly zones. We have a, you know, we have a system for resolving conflict that works and it really is about rewriting your relational DNA. We, we, we have a way of like, like laser, you know, laser guiding you with our kind of loving, caring, 
you know, where we each represent the pole of the masculine and feminine, and we can usually translate for both partners really, really well working together. Mm. You know, so we have a system for resolving things, rewriting that relational DNA, either as a couple or as a single, that works, that feels great. Mm. And almost everyone from our last retreat said that they were actually able to solve their biggest conflict, their biggest pattern, and felt like it just wouldn't or even come back, you know, mm. even, wouldn't even come back. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not, not, it's not bad for two days, mm -hmm. you know. Many people uh, came to us after being in therapy for years around this topic or for decades of having the pattern and reading self-help books and all of that. So, you know, we, we feel really proud of, of, of our ability to help you really rewrite that. Um, and so, um, and that work is hard to do via online or in a webinar. So we really want to invite you to come see us and spend uh, probably two of the most powerful days of your life. Um, rewriting that relational DNA, having an impact on every relationship you have after. You know, each of you have like a relationship angel and a relationship devil inside of you when it comes to how you relate to your romantic partner. You know, you know, at sometimes you're just an amazing, epic lover, so beautiful, so sweet, kind, insightful, thoughtful, romantic. And sometimes you're, you know, you're kind of a jerk, right? <laughs> you're, kind of, you're, you're like we sometimes short say. And... We sometimes say that, that that you you reserve both the best of you and the worst of you for your partner. So at the evolving love workshop, you get to really let the angel side of you be in charge and determine how you want to resolve conflict and previously there are certain things that the, the devil's been in charge of like sort of domains oh this is coming up i'm gonna handle this right and so we, we kind of let the angel be in charge really and we soothe and relax the fears and concerns that that lead the devil uh side to um so it doesn't have to come out and, and be so destructive and difficult and so that you kind of like tame that devil side of you so he gets kind of cuddly and then the angel gets to be in charge and uh, you end up walking out having seen yourself more as an angel seeing the angel more in your partner and that's part of what lifts up, up the whole thing to feel so amazing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh, in this workshop uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you'll learn um, and let's let, let's take a look at what you're going to learn with, with us. So um, we 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 cover a lot in three days, and it isn't even just the three days because you get months and months of working with us through um, a, an extensive manual we give you and an online group and all of that. But really, in the in the workshop itself, we're going to practice three evolutionary conversations that will raise the consciousness of your relationship. You know, we're really really big believers in teaching you the nuts and bolts of what is evolutionary relationship. What are the distinctions that create it as such? How do you go from ordinary to extraordinary in your relating? And um, you know, it can be taught. It's just we don't we aren't in an educational system where we're taught how to love and relate in these ways but you know in a few days we can actually teach you how to do this um, so one is you'll practice those three evolutionary conversations um, two you'll learn about how uh, more about what to do when your partner triggers you and how to de-escalate without giving up your truth right we don't want um, you know this idea of compromise or selling out or, or self betrayal that we see is really common in how most relationships deal with conflict mm -hmm. one or the other of you is self betraying Mm -hmm. um, over and over again. And even if in the moment that seems like a, a worthy um, sacrifice uh, over time, it never does. Um, so that's two. Um, three, we're going to design your ideal love story and practice embodying it together. That's so fun. Right? So we'll have you really work on that. And you're going to see evidence of each other really being a version of themselves that you'll just be in awe of uh, as you as you watch and we'll help you anchor that over the course of the months that follow so that it's not just something you can do in the room with us but it's something that you carry on um, you know for uh, we'll resolve once and for all one of your most painful recurring patterns um, and if we don't resolve it all the way we promise to at least begin you on the process and, and show you everything you need to do step by step in order to get there and um, in our last workshop we had almost everybody in the room um, go from beginning to end and resolve something really, really fully and completely um, and, 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 and put to bed um, a recurring pattern. 
And so we'll give you all of the tools that you need to do that. And then uh, five is, uh, you know, we'll show you how to make sure that your uh, resolved conflicts stay resolved, mm -hmm. right? So that they don't come back later, a month later, a week later, a day later, in the car on the way home, you know? <laughs> so we're, you know, we're gonna show you how to do that. Um, six, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna show you, we're gonna talk about um, why being good at conflict resolution is, uh, the way it's normally taught can actually hurt your relationship. Like there's some myths and misunderstandings that are super common that I bet all of you um, are doing, or at least most of you, even the really conscious ones. In fact, often it's the very conscious ones that are trying on some of these <laughs> yeah. that are actually creating more harm than good. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, seven uh, will detect your partner's highest evolutionary path and then learn, we'll teach you how to guide them to it and vice versa. So you'll each be discovering the evolutionary paths, the, the highest point of potential and developmental mm -hmm. line, line that they need to go on next. Mm -hmm. And we'll show you how do you be the kind of person that guides your partner there so that they are just forever um, um, seeing you as the key to the man or woman they always dreamed of being. Yeah. And that's really what an evolutionary partnership is. So we'll tell you how to detect that and how to guide them. There's a false dichotomy there. People think that either they're like trying to fix their partner, you know, you, you know, you're not supposed to fix your partner. Mm -hmm. So they think, oh, either they're trying to coach me or fix me or like, you know, change me. Or they're just hands off and they're like, well, you know, to each his own, I'm not trying to fix you. So uh, I'm just not, I'm not yeah. involved. So there's this like, there's like this apathy or this controlling uh, continuum that people think they have to be on. And we show you this total path completely off of that continuum where you're not trying to fix them, but neither do you have apathy, but you're actually engaged in their evolution, which is what makes an evolutionary partner. Totally. Sure. And then, and then here's a big one is that, uh, you know, in the two day, uh, will help you transcend the normal cycle of complaining and defensiveness. I mean, these are big ones in relationships. Like I bet all of you um, can relate to the complaining and defensiveness as one of the primary mm -hmm. patterns, not just anxious and avoidant. You know, we're giving a lot of tools on that, but there's there's equally painful for relationships are the complaint and defensiveness, mm -hmm. the victimization kind of that we go into around mm -hmm. our relating. We're going to talk a little bit about how to transcend that for you and your partner. And so we're going to go to questions in a second. But before we go to questions, uh, and we're going to answer some of your questions, and there's some great ones already, um, I want to let you know how you participate. Um, so first of all, you want to uh, register now by clicking the button, and it's on the screen for mm -hmm. them. Yeah, yeah. So, so they'll be taken to the choose, where if you're single, you, you click that button. That, that just means you're not in a relationship right now. We have a particular day planned for you for those not in relationship and then if you're either in a couple or in multiple relationships even just we're we're agnostic about the relationship structure um you can you can come to the couples one and yeah. you're welcome to come to all three days that's right um but uh you'll be taken to a page that'll let, allow you to choose which one uh if you click the button on your screen right now so first you register and then the whole thing starts with your love profile which is a transformational experience in itself and that is where you get to uh, through the use of our technology get feedback from your friends from your current partner and if you're brave even from ex-partners yep. about Which we what, recommend yeah it's really incredible the feedback that you get people have told us that just doing the profile was worth the whole price totally. of the program and that that was even before they showed up on exactly. the first day so, so you, you do that as a preparation um, and the sooner you uh, register you want to register tonight so that you can get that started um, then the second piece to how to participate is the two-day deep dive which is in San Francisco uh, on the, on Treasure Island um, uh, let us know if you're coming in from out of town we got lots of wonderful hotel recommendations nearby mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and there's lots of practice time in the two-day deep dive with both your partners and with yourself and with the comfort of strain uh, strangers so you can some stuff it like when you're practicing it you don't have it worked out yet you might want to not practice yeah, we, it with we're, your we'll be partnering you with other people in the exactly. workshop you'll be in a room full of evolutionary lovers that are really deepening into this dialogue and you know we'll be diving in together as we are all evolving the way we love yeah. um and then we give a lot of focused one-on-one -on -one guidance to everyone throughout the experience so mm -hmm. in that two day you get a lot of face time with us uh, you also get uh live exercises and a workbook 
Um, so you can learn the practice conversations, frameworks, and step-by-step -step practices that will evolve the way you love, the way you relate, the way you communicate. Uh, we give you a, a workbook, um, which is also downloadable. Um, and we give you an email sequence where you get a reminder every week of a practice you can do that week to enhance uh, and deepen your love relationship uh, with daily, weekly, monthly rituals. And these things are awesome. Uh, there are things that we do personally in our relationship. Yeah. Every one of them is stuff that we do all the time and we wanted to share, like open the kimono. You do, what are the practices that we're doing daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, and give you those in an email sequence that's going to live on with you for the yeah. year after you yeah. do this workshop it's to help you integrate the material so that you don't forget it because you'll be reminded of it in your inbox. Yeah. And then you also get the user's guide to monogamy and non-monogamy, how to keep your sex high, hot and drama free. Yeah. And uh, you know, some of you are in uh, more alternative style relationships. Uh, we initially were gonna write these two handbooks, how to keep sex hot and drama free for monogamous couples and then for non-monogamous couples. And we realized to our surprise after getting into the outlines that the first 80% of the workbooks were the same. Were yeah. the same. Yeah. So, um, so, uh, the, that we have this one workbook and, that, and you'll get that. That's, that's another highlight. Um, yeah, just around the, the manual that you're getting, it's, it's really the beginnings of a, of a book that Brian and I will be writing together. Um, and the, one of the things that people said about it was like, whoa, I thought this was just going to be sparse, like a few little handouts, this manual. And they're like, this is really meaty. This mm. is rich. This in and of itself is incredibly valuable. I can't even believe you guys are giving me this entire manual, basically the, the war and peace of how to have a yeah. uh, evolutionary partnership. It'll contain things we won't even have time to cover because we really want to give you something comprehensive. And it's so good to have that icon on the bookshelf so that you can take it down and look over at it together a month later, two months later. Right. Um, and then lastly, uh, the way to participate is to, to take advantage of our office hours. Because once a week, we're available for our weekly office hours and the Evolving Love Facebook group uh, to give you more one-on-one -on -one support. Uh, and it allows you to really belong to the community, of course, of like-minded uh, seekers who, who you not can only learn from, but also share your experiences with. So, if you were going to pay us for our coaching, you know, which we do one-on-one -on -one and which We'd, we'd happily try, you know, you guys, can, you guys can call us now and we will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. But if you were going to get personalized attention from us, it'd probably be around $7,500 um, or more and take you five or six months. To right? do everything that's in the to course. To do everything that's yeah. in the course, you know, one-on-one -on -one with Brian and I separately, um, um, not, not in a live event group setting, but with us. And, uh, and it would be worth it because we would just really laser in with you. Um, and that would be some of the best investment that you could make in your relationship. You know, there's no better investment you can make into the quality of your life than to improve the quality of how you love. It changes everything. And not only that, um, you know, we replicate how we love in, in, in all of our systems and how we, what projects we do in our economic systems, in our political systems, in our culture. So really we're talking about shifting the very culture that we're in by changing how we love. So, um, you know, it would be worth the thousands of investment, but, you know, instead of taking, you know, all of that time, um, uh, or five or six years of traditional therapy or even two or three years of traditional therapy that would probably be 10,000 or more, or maybe, maybe more than that. Um, you can have this kind of shift in the way that you love and the way that you feel loved in just a couple days um, for couples and one day for the singles event. So we want to give you this live event. We love doing things in groups. There's a power that occurs in the field when we get all of you in the room together. That's, that's a real rarefied space. Um, so that's what we want to give you today at a fraction of that price. The, the price for the couples workshop is only $495 per person for two days. And the singles workshop is only $595. No, $395, yeah. Well, that's without the... Discount. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah. So... Uh, you have them backwards. <laughs> the, I'm sorry? The couples workshop's $595, oh. and the singles workshop is $495. Oh, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. I have it backwards. Yeah. Sorry. Oops. So the, the couples workshop is... 595 and the singles workshop is 495 yeah. for one day um sorry about that and uh the workshop is uh november 4th for singles and november 5th and 6th for couples that's coming up pretty soon in just a couple of weeks but we did want to give you an early bird discount of a hundred dollars if you buy your tickets in the next 24 hours 
Um, so that means the couples workshop is only four ninety five dollars for two days, and the singles workshop is only three ninety five dollars for you. And everyone that, that hears that tells us, oh my God, I can't believe a f you know spending three days with you, two days in the one event, one day in the other event is only a few hundred dollars. We wanted to make this such a no-brainer, so accessible. Um, and we may not do it for at this price for very long as we start to build kind of our credibility and notoriety mm -hmm. and come out with our books. Um, but we wanted to make those of you that want to really start this process with us now um, have a way to do it with us at a few hundred dollars so that you're really getting into it with us and having it be accessible and easy for you to say yes. Couples, coaches, therapists, and counselors have been reaching out to us to learn about what we're doing. And uh, this is what one professional couples counselor had to say after taking the workshop. Quote, I feel like I've been waiting for this information all my life. My lens of what a relationship can be has widened and expanded. I now have a definition and a knowing of what an extraordinary and evolutionary relationship looks like and feels like. And I know the way I do relationship and the way I work with my clients is forever changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we tend to get incredible feedback from a lot of relationship counselors and therapists that love doing our work because like nobody is teaching anything remotely like this. You know, we had a therapist come in and say, uh, can, can you certify me in some of this? Because this is so far beyond what anything I've learned and, and I really want to add it to how I help people in love. So mm -hmm. even if you're um, in the business of love and relationship, um, you know, this is uh, just vocationally relevant to you in, in, in meaningful ways. You know, you could pay thousands and thousands of dollars on, on uh, becoming a licensed therapist or you could come for three days with us and get, get the beginnings of a completely new understanding of how to handle love. So just, just take us up on this offer. It won't be for very long. You know, the early bird is only going to last for another 24 hours. So we really want you to get in on that. We like to reward people that just decide. Don't just take weeks and weeks to hem and haw. It allows us to prepare for how many people we're going to have in the room, which takes the kind of headache off of our plate because then we know who's showing up. And it'll give you an opportunity to begin the love profile, which we want you to have a few days to do before we begin. So you're going to want to take us up on this um, offer now. Uh, get the 100 discount you'll be so glad you did and while you're clicking on the button let's uh, let's open it up the line uh, to questions and at the beginning we promised you the free download and we want to make sure to give you that link and so I want to tell you how to get this resource that we've been talking about throughout and maybe I actually I'll let Brian tell you sure. how to get it because so, we talked about these meditations and this maintenance exercise and um, there's we want you to jump through a little hoop to get it just well, to show, well, show us that you want it I want you to have it on your phone uh, because uh, that's where the way where you're going to to use it, right? It, it's no good if you're triggered in the moment. You're not away from your desk or whatever. You don't have it on your computer. So I really want to have it right with you. Um, and so what I want you to do is actually text me, and you can text me at I'm going to give you my phone number four one five eight one zero nine seven six nine, and text me with uh, just your uh, name, the word attached, your name, the city you live in and your email address. So that's four things. The word attached, your name, uh, the city you live in, and your email address uh, to my phone number, which again is 415-810-9769. And I'm going to return the text with a link that has all the uh, stuff on there so you have it right on your phone. Um, and uh, that's what I want to do. Uh, and now, as you guys are doing that, and as you're press, uh, pressing the Register Now button um, for the retreat, we want to yeah, we want to get some get some. Uh, oh, I answers. can't wait for your book. This is an awesome offer. I just want to, while you're putting together your your questions and send them in the chat box. When we've tried to do Google Hangouts, getting you on live, it's just too much of a. It takes too long, and and so we're just going to take your questions from the chat box. Um, um, so this is wonderful. I've got I, as a couples therapist and attachment ther therapist, absolutely amazing. I agree. Best technology available out there. Thank you, Joe. Um, Diane is asking, what's the cost um, if we do both single and couples all three days? Is it less expensive and uh, need hotels? So we're going to offer you $100 off of each one. So consider it $200 off. So it would be $395 plus $495 mm -hmm. to do all three days. And a bargain to spend all three of those days. I highly recommend it. We cover uh, different content on each day. So there's a little bit that's the same, but there's a lot that's different. And I think you're going to get a lot out of each one, especially if you're in the business of love and relating, like come to all three days. So just, I want to talk about that. Um, 
what, let's see, what three items did you ask for? Somebody's asking. So will you repeat those? Sure. Uh, and someone's also asking for the phone number again. It's 415-810-9769. That's 415-810-9769. Someone's chatted it in there. And yep. the things I want you to hear from you are your name, the word attached, uh, the city you live in, and your email address. Yeah. Um, we got to be able to email it to you and... We, we definitely want to know the name in your city you're in just because the more people we know of in different cities, we're going to start doing more, more cities. Um, and it, it really depends on who has interest. And so, um, Tabby says, I'm totally confused about the pricing now. Do singles just go for the first day? And what was it about the three days? Great question. So Tab, let me answer that question. And those of you that are wondering, we, realized in teaching this that there's slightly different focus and different content for those of you that are not in a relationship than those of you in a relationship. And we noticed that people that were single when they came to our workshops and we were talking all about partners and couples and relating, they felt cheated. They're like, well, hey, I'm not in a relationship. So how does this apply to me? And you're telling me to partner with my partner and I can't do that because I don't have one right now. So we created the first day just for you. If you are single and you want to be uh, learning how do you do the inner work and prepare yourself for an evolutionary relationship what do I do then and how how do we focus on that and so that first day is for you if you're single now as a single person if you realize that there are a lot of skills that are in the relationship like conflict resolution that we're going to do in our couples workshop like how to create that evolutionary context in that conversation with your partner those skills are valuable to know so that you have them from day one when you're in a relationship so if you're single and want to come to the other two days so that you learn those relational skills you can come to the three days you'll have to pay for both um, but there's a discount available and you can do both. So I hope that answers your question. The singles day will be focused on those of you single will be really focused on how do you do that inner work when you mm -hmm. don't already have a partner. The couples workshop is going to be talking about when you're in your partnership, what are the relational skills you need? Also valuable for you if you're single, but we will be talking about couples and partners and doing some partnered exercises and we will find you someone to, to partner with because mm -hmm. we always have a few singles in both uh both of them and a few coupled people in the singles one mm -hmm. so we'll have um some cross pollination so uh, let me look at some of the other questions you, you can imagine in the singles workshop we're we're really focusing more on what's your evolutionary path and how can you attract people into your life that are aligned with that and and what are the how do you know whether someone's really an evolutionary partner or whether it's just like a mr right now or a mrs right now um, so we'll focus more on that and in the couples workshop we're really going to be unearthing what are the current real-time conflicts that you're having right now and how can you solve them right now so they're actually solved with the person yeah. and as Jennifer said uh, both singles and couples have gotten a lot out of attending uh, both workshops yeah Diana doesn't can you attend couples as a single yes, yes. totally can you attend uh, the couples a workshop if you're not bringing your partner yes you you might be in a relationship and you're going to be able to go home with the manual and the and the we can even add them to the facebook group and you're going to be able to put them on the sequence and you can actually give them a lot of the experience when you get home so i highly recommend if only one of you can come which happens sometimes when you have kids and you need to figure that out um please do come so the, yes you can come either way um, i want to answer andy's question andy's question where can i find out about the workshop in the other cities that you offer it mm -hmm. so right now um we're basically only offering the next workshop mm -hmm. uh which is in san francisco um there is a a talk about perhaps one coming up in Toronto but we haven't confirmed that we are gonna do that and we're gonna Maybe basically in introduce them based on demand but if you're in Toronto and if you're uh, in Boulder really I recommend coming to this next workshop uh, because we just don't know what uh, when it will be and for sure there are no more this year so uh, so come join us in November uh, in San Francisco um, even if you're far away I, I promise that'll be worth it mm hmm and then let's see, uh, let's see, uh, if you're based overseas and don't have a U.S. cell number, is there another way, yes, that we can get this information that you're offering? Thank you for your great workshop. Uh, why don't we give Liz uh, um, an email? 
uh, that she can send and say, I'm overseas and don't have a U.S. cell and really want this information, and we will uh -huh. email it to you. And, and those of you that would like it via email, you can do that. Yeah. Which emails do we want to give them? Info at, or do we want to give them Brian? Brian? Brian, okay, so this is kind of a long email address. Those of you, write this down. Brian and Jennifer at California hyphen leadership.com. That was a little fast probably because that's a lot of letters. And it's the same email you would have gotten from us telling you about this webinar. So all you have to do is respond to that. If you are on this webinar, you have this email already, but it's Brian and Jennifer at California hyphen leadership.com. If you don't have a US cell and don't want to worry about having to pay for international call, we'll absolutely get you this resource. The idea is we want you to have it. It's free. We're not charging for it. So please do that. Text Brian or email us. We'll make sure that you get it. Um, someone's asking all the skills apply to any relationship, not just romantic ones. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Nigel. Mm -hmm. These skills, like, if you want to be the best leader that you can be, if you want to be the best influencer you can be, if you are in a collaborative environment of any any kind, you definitely want to learn some of what we're teaching. Uh, what are the hours for the uh, November 4th Singles Workshop? We'll be beginning at 9 a.m. Pacific time and ending at 6 p.m. There will be a lunch which you can participate in for an extra $20 or you can leap leave and go in the area and go off on your own or go with other people, but we'll order you a lunch if you want to participate in that. So that's the hours, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., then we'll break you before dinner. Uh, and then that's the same for the couples, 9 to 6, with a nice, healthy lunch break to give you time to really decompress and take it in. We've got some people saying, yay, Toronto. Did you say an island in SF? Yes, that's Treasure Island. Good guess. There is this place called Home. It's a really sweet name. It's called Home because it's hearts open, minds expanded. And that's the name of this incredible, totally remodeled transformational workshop space that you guys are going to love. It's gorgeous. Um, and then Tab is asking, why were we going to text you? To get what? To get what? To get the um, uh, two meditations to self-regulate your nervous system. We have one for anxious and one for avoidant. They're 10-minute meditations that are helping you to self-regulate. They're absolutely free. There's a page that has them. And then for the maintenance exercise for how to repattern your organismic rights, right? So if you want that, either text Brian at 415-810-9769 or email us uh, at, the, at the email that you got that was this webinar, that you got the indication for this webinar. Um, curious, is the workbook the same for each workshop? Um, no, it's slightly different. It's slightly different. It's slightly different. There are, are a lot of things that are the same and then a few pieces that are different. So it's like 70% overlap, 30% different. Um, that's from Lisa. Uh, is there, let's see more. My girlfriend is more sensitive than I am and has attachment issues. She's insecure. Our conflict is often, I say, do something. Uh, she gets upset. We then spend two hours resolving what seems to me was a really minor issue. How can we speed up conflict resolution? Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a whole webinar in and of yeah. itself. Yeah. What could we say in the last couple, two, three minutes, we're a little bit over, um, that would give uh, give this person a little bit um, around well, this? The, the, I don't see their name. I was going to call you by name. But I um, yeah, I think. Because um, it's the top one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the the So the first thing I'd say is that um, if that's the pattern, then it's likely that you're not actually resolving the conflict. It's likely what you're doing is just repairing the hurt feelings, mm -hmm. and that you're you're not making any adjustments into the underlying patterns which are propping up the conflict. So that it's almost like um, if you have a house full of pins and needles and you keep poking yourself, then you poke yourself, you say "ow," and then you suck on, you get the band aid, and then it stops bleeding and it feels better. But you haven't removed any of the pins and needles, so you're just going to do it again. Um, and those pins and needles might be in your behavior. It might be in her behavior and her patterning um, or uh, some combination, which is the most likely. And um, so if, if you're not seeing a progression over time, over weeks and months, where it's her tolerance, her like uh, resilience is going up and up and up and up and up, then probably there's things that you're not looking at about your own uh, unconscious way of triggering her pattern. Yeah, I just just on that line and I, gosh, come come see us. Come to this workshop because we can help you resolve that one. It's a little hard to do in a webinar. It's hard to do with very little information. 
but I, I want to leave you with something around this, which is women tend to be the canaries in the relationship. In other words, that they it's not always the women, but it's, it's like the feminine in us, whether men or women, tend to be the alarm bell that, can, that senses, because we're so intuitive, we're so highly tuned to the field of the relationship that we are sensing, sometimes erroneously, sometimes overly, and maybe because it's even our own stuff, but we are sensing that there's a perturbation in the field, that there's a, uh, there's something in the force, as they say. What did Luke Skywalker say? <laughs> there's uh, a disturbance. There's a disturbance. disturbance in the force, right? And so she might be accurately picking up a disturbance in the force that you're calling this minor issue, um, but she might be really wrong about what it is, right? The the feminine in us tends to be good at setting off the alarm bell that there, you know, the alarm's going off. But let the masculine uh, f use the uh, fill the role of of going down to get the burglar. We're troubleshooters, like right. Yeah. Let 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 the, let the masculine decide what it is and finding the burglar. But if you could lean into trusting that her alarm bell is going off for a reason, even if it's in her own mind, there is something that is perturbed in the field that needs addressing. Mm -hmm. She might not be wrong about it. She might be blaming you for it. She might be thinking it is some minor issue. That She could be exactly right about it and it's something you're not willing to admit. But just give her the benefit of the doubt that she is right about the perturbation and then the both of you can explore what the source of it is, even if it's in her own illusion or in her own mind, and look at maybe if even the source is of, of particular patterns of behavior. So try that on in your relating and see what happens if you'll lean in. Her nervous system will relax if you don't just deny that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Part of a woman, what a woman sorry. does, sorry, and then, and then I want to hear from you, babe. Uh, part of what a woman does is when you resist that there is a perturbation, she's going to she's going to dig in harder and going to really keep you in that two hour conversation, as you said, mm -hmm. because you're not just validating. If you're, if you just say, okay, yeah, there is something up, mm -hmm. you know what, babe, you are right. I have been pulling away a little bit and you've been noticing that. And I think you're, it's true on that, that last time we were together, I think I was a little distant. Wow. Like hearing that she's like, Oh, thank you. I'm not crazy. Right? She just wants you to let her know that that thing she's sensing intuitively with her hypersensitive um, you know, uh, um, sensory systems is actu actually accurate. So let her have that and look and, and, and see what it is. So go ahead. Well, you were letting Robert off the hook a little more than I would because you said even if it's in her own mind. You know, right, I, I right. actually, my, my rule that I suggest is, uh -huh. is trust her body even if the words are not trustable because in a triggered state nobody's words are trustable if you're triggered what you say isn't trustable and a woman's triggered what she's saying isn't triggerable so she, it's trustable so if she's really triggered she's like i'm really angry because you are wearing you know, unmatched socks it's probably not the unmatched socks yeah and what we do as men often when we hear that from a woman is say oh she's crazy she's like overreacting to the unmatched socks thing and we dismiss <laughs> the whole thing which then right. makes her go even more crazy uh what if we trusted the body and said you know what i'm in relationship to the deepest source of wisdom available on the planet which is a woman's intuition as expressed in her body and that's telling me something's wrong now it's attached to this mouthpiece which is giving me kind of uh, faulty information about what's wrong, but I actually trust that the intensity of the reaction is accurate. And then start mm -hmm. asking yourself, what is that reaction appropriate for that is going on? And this is when the masculine's ability to troubleshoot really kicks in. We can't tell whether there's a problem or not, but we're sure good at finding out what it is when someone tells us to look. So then it's like, okay. Um, and then it might be, you know, bubble blah socks, but and you know, she's talking about you weren't there for me, and you go, you know what? Are you are you stressed about your job right now? And are you are you were you hoping that I was gonna spend more time talking to you about your job situation and really helping you with that? And she'll say, ah, yeah, that, that's it. And then and now her body reacts, relaxes because you're in reality with her. Um, so that's what I was going to and, and that, by the way, was Robert Love who wanted to say hi. Yeah, yeah. We know. So thank yeah, you, know. Robert. I love that. Last question, because this is a good one. Carrie is asking, how can you communicate the disturbance in the force without sounding like you're nagging? Yeah. Right? right? Because that's one of the big complaints that, that uh, often men have of women, but that when we bring up these things, 
uh, somehow all of that gets categorized as nagging, and sometimes it does come off that way. So, so as a man, how can a woman, you know, tell tell you without complaint and defensiveness, come tell you about this disturbance in the force? Um, well, like like if I was going to custom design it for me, it would be yeah. um, you know, a while naked. You know, like that's one way you could. You Are could, you naked? <laughs> you could start undressing me. <laughs> and then and, and say, by the way, there's something bothering me and I don't know what it is. That's number one. Um, number two is uh, to, to just report the sensations you're having as though they're in the field. It's almost like, you know, like you're reporting something that's in the room together. Wow, I, my body's really, like I'm totally contracted and I'm not and I'm, I'm having all these strange thoughts about like being afraid that you're gonna cheat on me, which doesn't make sense, and, and, and then be in an inquiry. So what do you think that's about? Like, if you had to guess, what's causing that? And so you're inviting the dialogue without a prepackaged blame, like you're certain that you know exactly what's causing the problem, and if they don't address that, then they're bad. That's the part that, um, becomes problematic mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and it could be i don't know you walk by um you walk by the laundry and it's his chore to do the laundry and he hasn't done it and you go god damn it, the laundry's not done and so for you it's the laundry that's causing it but remember that the laundry is just a trigger and that what's causing it is something else so you might go you know what i walked i walked by the laundry and i just i got rageful so right. i know that you didn't do that and that sucks but what is there something else going on too like help me uncover this thing so I hope that answers your question, Carrie. Yeah, I have one thing for Carrie as well, and for any of you, because like you know, just notice that these questions—they're—they're they're part of the human experience, right? These are—we're all having some of these these things come up for us, and so uh, one of the ways that I like to communicate something like a disturbance in the force that doesn't sound like nagging, but that really gets under it is I notice that the top layer is like uh, that top layer is kind of like negative and complainy and often uh, victim-y. Um, and, and if I allow myself to go underneath the complaint layer, un underneath this top layer of truth, which is not the deepest layer of truth, I notice that underneath there's probably a value that's being violated that I care about that my partner probably cares about. Mm -hmm. And if, uh, what was the, what, was, what thing did you use that you left the dryer open or something? Yeah, the, the laundry's not done or whatever. Yeah. All right, well, here's a, here's a, like a mundane example. And I could be complaining, God, why do you always do that? It's like every time, like you won't ever close that. Sorry. And so if I look underneath the complaint, um, and, and say, okay, so what is the value that feels like it's being violated that's actually really precious to me, and why don't I share that? And so I might say, you know, I, I really, you know, there's something precious to me about having our space feel really conscious, mm -hmm. and that I feel like our space is a reflection of like our internal world, and when my external world isn't conscious, mm -hmm. then I can't have my internal world as conscious, and those two things are really connected, mm -hmm. and I'm wondering, like it's precious to me that we've created a really conscious space, and I just want to invite you to be on my team for making it more conscious, and Gosh, one of the ways to do that would be to close the door, but there are a few other ways. Like, are you in for playing that game of making our space more conscious? Yes. Right? And that's so easy to say yes to, right? You're like, you're, you're calling them into an aspirational way of being towards a value that they themselves want to be. Right? So, so just try that on, Carrie. Every complaint you have, look at the value being violated. So I think we've got to go. We've gone way over. Yeah, look, it's um, getting dark. I can and see it's the, getting dark. The we've got the question there. about the how does it much does it cost if you do both? And it's three ninety five plus four ninety five to do both of those because you get the discount. That's eight ninety um, for three days. Yeah, eight ninety for three days. But in one day it's gonna be one thousand and ninety for three days because of the price increase. So Yeah, so, so do, do it, it now. now. Decide now. If you're coming with a partner, talk to them to Tonight, we want you to get that early bird discount. Even without it, it's totally worth it because we're talking about $100, but still, you know, we want you to act. So act now, click the button, uh, reach out to us, uh, stay connected. Um, we love doing this work. We're so inspired. It feels so congruent for Brian and I to be teaching here. Thank you for your attention, your questions, your enthusiasm, your passion. Get a lot out of those resources we give you. Please reach out and get them. They're free. So do that as well. Have a great rest of your night. Um, hope to see you in San Francisco, November 4th, 5th, and 6th. 
for Evolving Love, Rewriting Your Relational DNA. Come find us. And I just wanted to let you know, um, I'm going to be returning your texts, uh, some of them tonight, some tomorrow. So I got a lot of texts, as you can imagine. Yeah. So you'll probably get your resource tomorrow. In the next 24 hours, you'll have yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, not, okay. if not sooner. All right. Take care. All right. Good night, you guys. Have a great one. Bye.